Hi, and welcome to the Institute for Restorative Health. I'm Dr. David Jowdy, and today we'll be discussing enhancing cellular health with epigenetic nutrition. If you're watching this online, please th read through our disclaimer. The content of this video is for educational purposes only. And as always, our ideal outcome with our patients here at the Institute for Restorative Health is to help you reclaim, restore, and renew your health in mind, body, and spirit. So let's take a look at our biorestorative matrix. Uh, it is made up of a number of, of pieces of the health puzzle, and today we're going to be focusing on the piece associated with epigenetic nutrition. So what is epigenetics? What are epigenetic messages? This term, epigenetics, refers to the effect of the environment on our genetic potential. Uh, when our bodies are pushed beyond what we can handle uh, from a genetic um, frame of view, then our systems can break down or become overloaded. It's very to look at, easy to look at genetics and see or think of immediate direct problems. If we run some sort of genetic test, uh, a DNA sample, usually these are saliva samples, we can be given a list of conditions that we may be predisposed to, specific genetic pathways that may be corrupted um, and are, are mutated or have what are called gene SNPs, um, which are ideas that the body will not be able to handle a certain thing or a certain chemical uh, reaction the right way. And as a result, there are numerous levels of symptoms that could come on as a result of that or even conditions that, that we could uh, encounter as a result of that as well. But what we also know is that our genes, uh, the way that God has designed our body, there's this very intricate system of checks and balances that occurs between our gene structures and within our genetic balance. So as one gene goes off balance, another gene might actually be kicking in to help and support that, that particular mutation. So by attempting to address gene mutations solely based on a DNA test or solely on what we believe our genetic makeup is like, it may actually overcompensate or it may create new problems that our body had already figured out a way to compensate for. So epigenetics comes into play because it brings stress and lifestyle into that picture as well. So it's, it's the effects of stress, the effects of our lifestyles on our genetic coding that we were born with. Uh, so if you look at this picture of this island, um, aside from the fact that there aren't any, any houses on it, um, it looks like a pretty stress-free and relaxed place to be, right? Um, we don't see pollution, we don't see cars, we don't see billboards, uh, there's no TV. Um, you know, a lot of the things in our lifestyles that create stress in our day-to-day -day life. I'm guessing if you're on that island, you don't have too many deadlines either, um, other than wanting to get home. Um, so if, if you're living on a deserted island like this, what type of stressors is your body going to encounter? Are those stressors different than living in the city that you're in now, or even someplace that you might be on vacation? I think they're all gonna be different, and those different stressors and those different lifestyle factors and the different area that you're in is going to play a major role on pushing your genetic potential. Will your genes or, or your genetic potential hold up to the stress of the moment of, of where you're at? I think this is a big reason why people might notice if they're on vacation or they travel or they're somewhere different, if they were able to leave certain things behind, they might not feel nearly as stressed as they were before. And it's more than just where we're at, it's, it's the effect of where we're at on our genes. We're going to take a look at one particular gene. This is a very common one. This is something that, that is uh, it's a hot topic uh, in health uh, and nutrition especially. Um, and this is a gene called MTHFR. Um, it's very much associated with different types of chronic illness. Um, many doctors, especially in chronic illness world, are testing for this gene mutation. Listen, it's one of quite a few genes that, that we have in our body, so it's not the only one we want to focus on. But this is a great one that we can make an example of in how we discuss uh, the, the role of epigenetics in our health. Um, so again, a very common gene mutation, and it's, it's estimated that upwards of 85% uh, of the American population has this issue to some varying degree. There are multiple genes, there are multiple numbers that are associated with them. Not every mutation is the same for every person. Um, common solutions would be to take methylfolate or methyl B12. Seems like a simple solution, but the reality is those things can be very, very good for some people, but they could be harmful or create symptoms in others. So why do some people respond very favorably to a, a, a baseline solution like this, uh, while others with very similar genetics 
may feel worse. Um, some of the things that we look at with this particular gene as well, symptoms that are associated, fatigue, uh, inability to detox chemicals properly, uh, neurological disorders, the list is long, uh, immune system uh, disorders, the list is very long, uh, and at times the list can be uh, a bit intimidating uh, with the number of things that are associated with it. But the solution isn't quite that simple of just saying, if you have this gene out of balance, take methylfolate or take methyl B12. Same holds true with many other, with many other genes and nutrients that, that hold true with them. We're gonna actually go through a case study here in a moment that kind of talks about how this whole process uh, plays out. So when you're looking at functional epigenetic testing, what is it beyond just looking at a, at a saliva test or, or a DNA sample? Uh, those are very good things to have. Having a baseline and knowing with uh, fairly good certainty what genetic imbalances you do possess can sometimes help uh, in functional epigenetic testing to put the pieces together and correlate what it is you're finding. But essentially, that's, it's not 100% necessary to have that to get you started on the road to good health and, and, and balancing your epigenetic. So our testing that we do here at the Institute for Restorative Health allows us to determine which chemicals or enzymes or toxins may be accumulating in the body. Uh, we cross-reference that process with the items and the genetic mutations or the genetic pathways that they're associated with. And by doing that, we can find the right nutrients, the right minerals, uh, maybe the right detox agents to help your body support and potentially even bypass uh, these genetic issues. Now, again, it's something that, that has to take epigenetics into place because if you're in an area that's very polluted, versus an area that's not very polluted, maybe you don't need as much, as much detox support as, as somebody else. So it's important to test knowing uh, those, those backgrounds as well. We do this with a system of energetic testing uh, that helps us determine the body's individualized responses to these different chemicals and enzymes and toxins. The result is improved cellular function. As we give the body the nutrients that it needs, all of our cells can function at a higher level. Keep in mind that our genetic code is ingrained into every cell in our body. So every cell could potentially work better when it's getting the right information or the right support for its individual and unique genetic code. Another important piece of this is that the chemical pathways that occur in the body need to be addressed in, in a very specific order. And that specific order helps the body put things together in the right way. It's kind of like looking at the recipe. Sometimes you get a recipe for a cake and it just says, take all the ingredients and mix it in one bowl and cook it and you get a cake. And there are other, um, the other things you might create that need to be done in phases or stages where you put a few ingredients together and you let them mix and then you put the next ingredient in. That's, that's what we're looking at here. This order is very specific because it is dependent on the chemistry that occurs before the next piece that comes up. Um, and again, the best course of vitamins and minerals is chosen to assist or bypass the function of those pathways. It's important to know that um, we can't always know if we're creating some sort of lasting, uh, long-term effect where we've actually corrected a genetic issue. And, th and that's not necessarily the goal. We don't necessarily believe that, that th these gene issues need to be corrected, but they need to be supported or bypassed. And when that happens, you may be on vitamins for a long period of time, maybe even your entire lifetime to help support this, but your body's gonna function better. And again, improved cellular health is the, is the result of that. So let's take a moment to go through a case study so you can see how this, how this really works. And this is a real life example uh, of a patient from our clinic. Um, we have permission from them to go ahead and, and give some of this information so you can see the process and how it played out. Uh, a 40 year old male, main symptoms, low energy, decreased stamina. Um, this individual did have a genetic uh, test done. So we had DNA uh, testing done that showed specific gene mutations. And in this case, the MTHFR mutation was was present um, and at the time was taking a B complex as a result of that knowing that thinking maybe maybe that would help these vitamins are supposed to increase energy right so B12 folate B complex one of the main things that you look at in taking that is and you can read it on a lot of the bottles of, of B complexes that you can purchase is that it's good for increased energy and stamina and, and possibly even brain health uh, but the results were opposite what it, what it create, start, started to create was this terrible fatigue in the afternoon. So making it through the beginning part of the day, all right, but really dropping off um, 
or earlier than necessary. So we took a look at this individual from the functional epigenetic perspective. And here's the outcome that we came up with. So first, the epigenetics were addressed from the functional perspective using energy testing. Um, what we found is that mitochondrial and anti-inflammatory pathways needed to be supported first. These were chemical pathways that basically the body is breaking things down necessary for the MTHFR system to work well, but th these things are coming beforehand. Um, by supporting these issues first with no B-complex whatsoever, uh, the body had a better chance of methylating on its own. That's what the MTHFR gene uh, pathway is doing, methylating and helping the body to detox. And that's exactly what happened. The body optimized methylation, and this person noticed that they were detoxing better. Um, they were having more bowel movements. They were clearing more stuff out of their body, losing weight, energy improved, cognitive function improved. Um, stamina was definitely starting to improve as well. Um, and basically, their body was doing what it needed to do. The key was, here's this gene that on paper didn't work right, didn't look right, seemed to be the ultimate problem. But realistically, when we looked at the body from a functional, individualized perspective, it was other things that were happening prior to the, the chemistry of that, that gene pathway that needed to be addressed. And it took all the pressure off that MTHFR pathway. We see this a lot. We see this really, really commonly with folks that, that believe that their body isn't detoxing well enough when the reality is their body is just being forced to detox more than it can handle. And if we can support those, those previous pathways, then the body has a much, much better chance of taking care of those things on their own. Now, this outcome doesn't happen with, with every patient that we see, but it is... It doesn't look like this where every gene, every MTHFR gene issue is suddenly solved by another problem. I've just as many cases, if not more, of patients that did need direct support for their MTHFR genes. But there's no way we would have known that unless we did looked at it from a functional perspective versus just a straight lab perspective. So the key to this is this process is, is, it must be completed in a very deliberate, uh, very specific manner, and most importantly, in the right order. Just like any, any lock and key mechanism, like a bicycle lock, you can have know all three numbers, but if you don't have them in the right order, you're not going to be able to open up that lock. And even if you get the first two right, but you miss that third one, the, the same effect is just the lock doesn't budge. So it's really, really important to look at someone from an individualized perspective understand their genetics, but also look at the functional side of their epigenetics in helping them achieve better cellular function. That's the best way to do, uh, to do this type of, of correction or this type of healing through functional epigenetic testing. So thanks for joining us today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed what we had for you. And don't forget to subscribe and follow us on social media at Institute for Restorative Health. Take care.